What's up guys, I'm BTC, a hotfix patch partially fixes some problems in the game, and a new item discovered that could be a teaser for a hero or a map. To start out, quick announcement, I'm sure many of you know that YouTube has been changing a lot of stuff lately and not necessarily for the better. If you're a subscriber, make sure that you hit the notification bell and set it to all in order to get notified of the new stuff that comes out. Also, when you're watching the videos, hit the like button because that interaction seems to also determine whether or not YouTube will send videos to you. So don't just do this for my channel either. You have to do this for the different channels that you enjoy watching. Subscribe, hit the bell, set it to all, and then make sure you're hitting like on those videos so that you can actually get the content that you're supposed to because you're subscribed to the channel. I know it's a weird system, but we got to make the best of it. Also, I have started streaming again over on Twitch, and if you want to check that out, there's a link down below where you can drop a follow over there. But of course, the best place to find out all of this new stuff is on my Discord server, where you get notified 100% of the time whenever I post a new video or when I start to live stream. So with all that out of the way, let's move on to the Overwatch stuff. First up is is the Paris map has been re-enabled. I know so many of you guys just absolutely love playing on that map and that you might have missed it tremendously, but have no fear, the issue has been resolved and Paris will now be back in rotation for quick play and competitive. And in case you didn't know why the map was taken down was because people could attack through the spawn doors on that map and it was just causing a lot of problems. So they took it down, fixed it, and now it's back. And speaking of things that have been fixed, the ground targeting issue for characters like Reaper, May, and Symmetra have been partially fixed. The other day, Blizzard put out a hotfix to resolve the issue, and while it is better, it is definitely still broken. There are some situations, like what you're seeing right now on the screen, where you just simply can't target the edge of that high ground there. This makes it really awkward, particularly for May when you're trying to put that ice wall up to block a Bastion or a Hanzo or a Widow or something that's, you know, up on their area, and you just can't put the wall in the correct spot. So it might go behind them, but it's not going to stop them from attacking you, right? So with Reaper and Symmetra, this is less of an issue, but again, this new system is just simply not as good as the old one. I still believe that the best solution for them would be to fully revert it to what it was previously, but unfortunately, it does seem like Blizzard is happy with this current version that we have, which means that it's going to stay in this partially broken state for the foreseeable future. So it's better, but it's still kind of broken. Uh, next up, there is a brand new item that has been discovered in the game over on the map Echo Point Antarctica. This map already has some lore attached to it, most notably with the May animated short, but I don't see much of a reason for Blizzard to revisit that because the story already had its closure. May got the message from Winston, she fixed the problems, left the tribute to her friends, and then she left off the area entirely in order to seek rescue. So there doesn't seem to be a whole lot more that they could do with this map. Also, Echo Point is not used for regular map rotation for quick play and competitive. This was added to be the very first map for Deathmatch, and then later it had the mini game for May Snowball Fight. So adding new stuff to this map doesn't seem like it would likely be found by players, And but maybe that was the point. Maybe they wanted it to take longer to find it, but through just sheer random chance, it happened to be discovered early. So let me show you what this new thing is. Over on one of the spawn rooms, there is a new object on a small table that resembles a snow globe. The base of the object is a fully 3D model bottom, and the top is a 2D model, meaning that no matter how you look at it, it's always going to be the same. Inside, instead of having a little snowman or some sort of other wintry scene, there's some energy pattern animation type stuff going on, and then in front of it, obviously, much more odd, is the word gray. Now, right out of the gate, I'm going to say that this could entirely be an accidental inclusion with a bad image file. That's a very real possibility. Maybe Maybe someone was messing around with an older file or had to change something to fix a bug in the map or whatever, and then this just accidentally got included, right? But we know that Blizzard has the habit of adding stuff like this into the game as a teaser for future characters. Ana, Sombra, Doomfist, those characters were all heavily hinted at in the game before they were ever released. But why would it be added to an obscure map like Echo Point Antarctica? Very few people would ever see it. And again, maybe that was the reason. Because if they had put this into Ilios or King's Row or something like that, it would have been discovered very quickly and a lot of players would have seen it right away. So. Here on this map, you know, maybe it get, 
takes a little bit longer. But in any case, the word gray could very likely be the name of a character. And to my knowledge, I don't believe there's any characters in the Overwatch lore that actually has the last name of gray in it. I'm not 100%, but I don't think there is. Perhaps that is the person who owns the snow assuming that it actually is a name, perhaps that's the person that owns the snow globe, or it actually looks more like it would be a trophy, or maybe some kind of an award given, like, as a parting, you know, when you're leaving the area, or, you know, whatever, that sort of stuff, you know, when you're leaving a job, they give you this thing as a kind of going away present or something like that. Maybe it was given to someone named Grey, and after all, it does have the Overwatch logo on the bottom. And I somehow doubt that Overwatch was in the business of making snow globes, so it seems more like it would be an award than just a, a thing to have as a novelty. Uh, now, I also want to point out that the Overwatch logo has a blue symbol on the top, which is unlike the standard Overwatch logo. The normal one has orange at the top, as you can can see here on Watchpoint Gibraltar and this is also the standard logo that's used for the game itself and for all the comics and for everything else it's always orange at the top right now on Echo Point Antarctica you can see on the flag and on some of the buildings and on the helicopter and stuff there's a different version of the Overwatch logo which has green at the top which perhaps is denoting a different division of Overwatch perhaps a science division or something like that because that's what Echo Point Antarctica was supposed to be it's a scientific outpost for Overwatch, so it's kind of differentiated from the kind of combat part of Overwatch, right? And the only place in the game where you can find that blue Overwatch logo is on one of Winston's skins, specifically the one called Undersea. And here it is, you can see that this skin has scuba equipment on instead of the jump jets and the spacesuit type stuff that he would normally have. And there is another legendary skin that uses this same kind of model, and it's called the Frogston skin, but it doesn't have the Overwatch logo on it. Instead, it just has the number 80. So that one skin is the only place where it has that blue logo. So what could this possibly be connected to? Well, is the blue on the top actually meaningful? Is there a separation of the different divisions of Overwatch? Does it denote something special? I mean, or is it just a color that one of the artists liked and they wanted to go with the blue instead. I mean, that's a possibility, sure. But let's assume for the sake of discussion that it does actually have some kind of a connection. The only other thing in the game is an underwater skin. So does that mean that this blue logo is part of an underwater division of Overwatch or perhaps an ocean-based division of Overwatch? could be a possibility. Now, I wanna show you this image right here. Some of you may already have seen this before. This shows a bunch of the very, very early concept art for the maps in Overwatch. And I often get asked, is Blizzard ever going to add an underwater map? And I always say that they're not going to have a map where you're moving through the water because that would just cause a lot of balance issues with the characters, right? Stuff like Hanzo and Widow would be really strong and characters that are short range would just be terrible if you had to slowly move through the water. But it could be similar to what we have on the Horizon Lunar Colony where you have an enclosed base that has the oxygen and all the other stuff that you need to support life. But instead of being on the moon, it's at the bottom of the ocean. And that's kind of what this image exactly looks like. It's one of those kind of habitation bubbles that's on the bottom of the ocean floor. Now, there might be an area where there's water that slows you down, but it would probably be like the low gravity section on Horizon where it's not actually part of the main path and it's just some something that you can kind of go out to and mess around with. So that would be the possibility for that stuff. But would Blizzard actually take the time to drop a hint like this on the Antarctic map? Well, I kind of think so. I, I think it would definitely be a real possibility because they could rationalize it as it's one of the researchers at the underwater base who's named Gray. And that person is friends with May and all of the colleagues at Antarctica. Or maybe that person originally worked at the Antarctica base and then got moved over to the underwater base or something to that effect, right? There, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that object, that award or whatever, could be in the Echo base. So remember the Sombra Arg 
that was largely done by some of the developers who were just kind of felt like doing it. It wasn't supposed to be this big official thing. So the fact that one of the devs could just throw this little thing into a map does seem like a very real possibility. So yes, the possibility does exist that it could just be an accidental inclusion. Maybe it's a bad file name or something and that's just the way it looks, right? Uh, but it's also possible that it could be a new character, or maybe a new map, or both. So, what do you guys think it is? Is it a teaser for a new hero? Is it a teaser for a new map? Or is it both? Or is it just nothing at all? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.